God bless saints. Thanks for joining us this Sunday. I don't know about you, but we endured a storm last night, but praise God, he saw us through safely, amen? Tell you what, taking advantage of every opportunity we have to be together. Let's jump into God's word here. We're gonna be picking up in the book of Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14. And it reads, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to the other one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Verse 19 reads, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you trusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Verse 26 reads, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents, who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm going to use as a subject this Sunday with focus on us being stewards with what God has given us, God owns it all. God owns it all. Precious Lord, giver of life and the source of everything that, that exists, we come to you, dear Lord, just asking you to move on our minds and move on our hearts to be good and to be better stewards, to be those, dear Lord, that you see on that day when you come back to account for what you've given us, dear Lord, as those worthy of being acceptable in your sight. So now my prayer, Lord, is that you have your way with us. Have your way with our time. Have your way with our talent. Have your way with our treasure. Have your way with our thinking as we surrender it to you, that you be glorified in all things. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. When I read the text, I am uh, reminded of the term stewardship, 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 and how we as Christians are called to be good Christian stewards. 
the definition of stewardship allied with there being an ethic that embodies the responsibility of planning and managing of resources that belongs to another person or organization, stewardship, stewardship. In other words, you are responsible for supervising or taking care of something that does not belong to you, but belongs to someone else. Yeah. If you rent a room or rent a home or a room in a home, what you'll find is that the landlord is the one that owns the property. But quite often we deal with property managers. Yeah property managers. And in dealing with property managers, the property manager is responsible for making sure that the dwelling is maintained for hospitable housing for the tenant, but also is responsible for collecting the finances that are due. In other words, making sure that they collect the rent. As it lines up with this concept, today's message comes as a word of encouragement to, rot, to remind us that God is our landlord. He's our landlord, but also to recognize that we are the property managers. We are the property managers. Let's talk about being the, God being our landlord. First of all, God owns it all. He owns it. He owns it. He owns it. What does God own? If, if you ask, if I ask you, name something, name anything. And as you begin to prattle off things, I'm here to tell you, yes, God owns that. I, I love how Psalm 24 verse 1 reads, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So that means everything from a tangible tangible perspective, we're talking about houses, we're talking about cars, we're talking about buses, we're talking about the earth, the moon, the stars, the quasars, all of this stuff. God, God owns, he owns it all, right? But then there's also the intangibles. And I love getting into the intangibles, things that we can't touch or put our hands on because now we're talking about things that are spiritual that considers angels and then demons, which are really fallen angels, but it also considers, hear what I say, saints of God, sin and righteousness. And I know some of you are saying, well, hold on, God owns righteousness. I could see that, but does God own sin? Well, understand saints of God that when it comes to, uh, sin and, and righteousness. It is God himself who has established the foundation and the rule for what they are, right? You don't know righteousness unless you know God's standard. But also, as it, as it pertains to sin, God's authority over sin, and let me let me help somebody, if, if we can understand the concept that even that Jesus Christ himself came to die for our sin, that even in this world that we live in, at that point, Jesus took sin on his back, took authority over it. And that's why God can take the righteousness and can take the sin and ensure that all things work together for the good of, for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's right. God owns it all. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's even why we can be delivered from sin or we can suffer the punishment from sin because God is in control. Understand the saints of God. There's another concept I want to make sure we understand about God owning it all. Coming from Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying of what would be said in the future, but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. And we are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. One of the reasons I want to get here, or what I want to get out of here in Hebrews chapter three is first and foremost, as honorable and, 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 and celebrated as Moses was as a servant and as a builder and as a, a not as a builder, but as, as a, a pillar in God's house. Hear what I say? as a standard bearer, but as a general as well, you too are celebrated by being one of God's chosen, one of God's appointed and one of God's anointed. But understand that as much as we are the house of God, we are not greater than the builder. Christ is the builder, the builder, the builder. Understand saints of God that, that 
the word is very clear to let us know that, that, that we are the house. And if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast, Christ as the son of God, hear what I say, allows us to maintain position in the house. We find ourselves faithful to God's call through Christ we remain a part of God's house. I bring this up, saints of God, because if we're not careful, we will find ourselves as once a part of God's house leaving and we are no longer under the warranty of the builder. Yeah, that, that's right, that's right. When you buy a house, there's a warranty that comes from the builder. But this warranty is predicated on all the things associated with the house remaining intact. But when we as, hear what I say, as a part of the house, walk away, we are no longer a part of that house. That means there's no connection, there's no responsibility associated with it, and we find ourselves without covering. But praise God, God being in control of sin and righteousness, praise God for his redemption, that even under warranty that all we've got to do is we could be way all across the street, across the brook, across the nation separate from the house and God will bring us back and restore us under warranty if we would but defer to God as our owner, as our builder. God knows it all. He owns it all. And this now leads to the next point of our accountability. So if God owns it all, then we are only the property managers. We're only stewards, but we represent God's authority and God's interest on what? On everything. If God owns it all and we are stewards and representatives, then we are responsible for it all or at least overseeing it and managing it. We've got to consider that God wants us to honor him with our time our talent, and our treasure. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine, it reads, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Understand, saints of God, if we're honoring God with our wealth and with our first fruits of all our crops, I know some people don't look at having two pennies in their pockets as wealth. But don't you know God can take those two pennies and do more with those two pennies than anyone can do with a million dollars, two million, two billion dollars. And it's all towards the fact of making sure that we're honoring God with what we have. Why? Because this comes with encouragement and it comes with a warning. You know, pastor was going to go there. The encouragement considers, it considers that God is first in everything. God is first in everything, how we spend our time, how we spend our talent, how we spend our uh, treasure. Do we honor God with our time by playing PlayStation and Xbox? Uh, and, and understand, saints of God, this is not a broad stroke, broad stroke brush question to say no, but but uh, God recognizes that there are times we need to decompress. But, but if we spend all of our time decompressing and we're never about God's business, is God being honored? Are we honoring God with our gifts, our intellectual gifts? How many of us are brilliant and we have that trillion dollar idea? Uh, yeah, but, but it gets wasted in conversation with OE and smoking marijuana, right? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Wasted thought, wasted intellect, because it goes nowhere. You never take action. You never pursue the vision. You never pursue the dream. Therefore, God is never exalted in your dream because you never act on it. Is God honored with what you buy? Yeah. Would God be pleased with your purchases? This is a question that we have to ask. Every time we spend money on something, is God pleased with this purchase? And it, again, it depends on what you are buying. Yeah, and that's a very easy question because you know goodness well if the Lord was physically beside you because he is with you. He's always with you. But if he's physically beside you when you make some of your purchases, would you consider, well, maybe I ought not buy this today. How many of us would even walk by some items, right? Is God honored when we donate money, when we give money to the homeless? Well, the question is, have you asked the Lord? There's some homeless that if you give them money, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go buy some alcohol with it? Is God honored with that? Is he? 
There are some people that if, if organizations that if you give money, they, they are going to support other organizations that are ungodly that support things such as abortion and unrighteousness and civil unrest. This is what we're paying for? Not with God's money, we shouldn't. We should not. And we should make sure that when we donate money that we look into the organizations that we are donating to. Understand saints of God is God honored when you get out of trouble and receive a second or even third opportunity. How many of us do that initial thank God for delivering me and then we jump back in the same mess only to be delivered again and again because God is faithful. God is not honored in you jumping into the mess. God is, God is honored when you're delivered. But when you continue to jump into the mess, saints of God, one thing you'll find is that there's going to be a time where God is going to account for that. We'll, we'll get into that later. But you've got to recognize that we represent God's authority in everything that we have, everything that we do, everywhere that we go, every word that comes out of our mouth. We are representing God, property managers. When we're dealing with the public, and I'm talking about a people that may or may not know the Lord. The Lord wants us to be him. And how better to be him than what comes from uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving saints of God everything that we do everything that we say we are doing as unto the Lord and and I don't want us to miss this from Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 it says whatever whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord that means there's no exceptions there's no exceptions don't don't look for the loophole well does that mean when I yes it does mean that it means it God is always present. And that means when, if God is present and he wants us to approach life, that means, yes, that should consider our work, how we work. Yeah, I know some of y'all saying, yeah, my, my supervisor, I, I really could go off on them sometime. But you got to remember you're representing the Lord. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing first, right? That means also considers, considering God in our friendships and relationships, in our dating in what we drink and how we drink. Is drinking a sin, Pastor? No, drinking's not a sin. But understand, overindulgence is. And if we find ourselves to the point where we have our mindset set up, yeah, I'm going to get toe up this weekend, God is not honored in that. In how we handle our enemies. Yes, the word tells us to love our enemies. And I know there's some people right now, uh-uh. Because a lot of times our enemies tend to be family, right? Mm -mm, they not coming to my house for Christmas, <laughs> for Thanksgiving. They not coming into my house. Saints of God, don't you know that if you're acting in the authority as well as the interest of God, we are constantly looking for opportunities for God's glory to shine. What better place than in relationships where we've had difficulty with family and friends and even people that we want to call enemies, what better way to lift the name of God than to dispense his mercy? Yeah. I, I, I gotta say, if, if we were more cautious in our thinking about how we dealt with our husbands and our wives and our children, hear what I say, and even how we talk to them, yeah. Don't you know that we would find life being a constant uplifting engagement, a constant uplifting experience? Why? Because now we are sowing the seeds of righteousness so that everywhere we go, our righteousness, hear what I say, the righteousness of the Lord carries us, greets us, and celebrates us. What better place to go to where you go where everyone knows your name and they're glad you came. They're always glad you came. I'm not talking about cheers. I'm talking about the world. 
There are some Christians today that can go just about anywhere because their reputation is that of one that brings life. Even by unbelievers and pagans, they love these people. They love you because you bring the joy of the Lord wherever you go. And not only is it your strength, but it becomes strength and encouragement to all those that you meet. All that's part of being a good property manager. Because at the end of the day, saints of God, you are God's property. You are, you belong to him. But also everything that we touch, everything that we say, it all belongs to God. It's better to know, saints of God, that you are a blessing and God is in everything that you do. Why? Because one day we will account for how we managed God's property. Yeah, 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 yeah. Understand, saints of God, from reading our text here in Matthew chapter 25, uh, we find that Jesus likened the kingdom of heaven to a man entrusting his property to three servants before going to another country. Understand, saints of God, the first servant, he gives five talents. The second, he gives two talents. The third, he gives one, one talent, right? But, but here's the reliability of these servants. We find that the first servant doubles the money. We find the second doubles the two talents to now have four talents. But the third servant buries his talents. Understand, saints of God, as the, the reading here in Matthew, we find that the master returns back and he goes to the first servant and the first servant, not only does he double the money, but the response of the master was, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. We then find, we then find that this, the second servant he doubled the two, turned it into four. And guess what the master's reply was? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Saints of God, don't you know that when we are faithful with God, with what God has given us, that we can share in our master's happiness. Thank God for his Holy Ghost. And we know when God is pleased and happy with what we're doing and what we've done with what he's given us, be it our time, our talent, and our treasure. But saints of God, there's a warning, there's a warning, there's a warning. That third servant wasn't so faithful. In fact, if we pick up in verse uh, 24, we find that the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you, you are a hard man harvesting what you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Understand, saints of God, to recognize the master as a hard man because he turns nothing into something, because he makes a way out of no way, saints of God. You've got to understand the type of mindset we're dealing with that wants to say that the master is a hard person or a hard being or a hard God because he has some very strict, hear what I say, saints of God, he has a very strict calling for us and ultimately to glorify us by glorifying him is the, 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 the relationship that we have with him. But for us to not recognize that and to see that as hard, it already shows depravity. Let me keep it going because he says, so I was afraid, fear is not of the Lord. Fear is not of the Lord. I, I've got to go here because when God calls us, he calls us. I, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day. God has, has called her, has delivered her, has delivered her. Hear what I say? When I say deliver her, I'm talking about has, has healed her from, from an illness that people don't necessarily come back from. But God has healed her, has given her a testimony. And, and the thing is that she's wrestling right now because, and I know where it comes from, when God, when you see God move in your life and things begin to happen in such a, a marvelous way, it's like, oh my, my God, I know it's you, Lord, but, but, but my natural mind can't fathom and that's just it. It's natural to be afraid, but it's supernatural to acknowledge that God is in control and to give it all to him so that he can move you from where you are to further you into where he needs you to be. It's natural to be afraid. It's supernatural to give it to God. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm right about that. Because you got to understand saints of God coming, picking up from the text. 
He said he was afraid. He was afraid and, and went out and hid, hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. So you're going to bring back to me what I already gave you. The master said you could have at least put it in a checking account. You could have put it where there could have been some interest. Hear what I say? An interest bearing account so that you could just make a little money off of it. Saints of God, understand that when God calls us to be good stewards with our talents, our time, our talent, and our treasure, understand it's not that he just wants us to make more money. He wants to be glorified in everything that we do. When I've had many, 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 many friends, and I'm talking about uh, probably well into the 30s who have approached me on uh, 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 multi-level marketing organizations and friend helping friends and susus and community-based loan sharing or wh whatever you want to call it. Many of them have come to me about these. And, and the thing I always say is, have you prayed on it? Have you prayed on it? Have you prayed on it? There's a lot to be gained in knowledge from a lot of these multi-level marketing organizations. But what you'll find is the money's not made in you building your business. The money's made when you bring in more people under you, thusly forming your pyramid. And at some point, somebody at the bottom is not going to get or reciprocate from their investment. What are you getting at, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that at the end of the day, saints of God, we got to go to God and ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? What you'll find that is that if you do nothing with it, we'll receive this same response that the master has given his servant. Verse 26, he replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not shown and gather where I sown and I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should put, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Verse 28, take the talent from him and Give it to the one who has the 10 talents for everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him and throw the worthless servant out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let me take us home right here, saints. Understand that that this servant was seen as wicked and lazy because they did not see fit to increase what the master had given them. Saints of God, I'm here to tell us we are seen as wicked and lazy when we don't increase what God has given us. And some, some people say, well, I have many talents and I have so many, it's hard to know. Well, pick one. And how do you pick one? Ask the Lord, which one do you want me to use first? Start there. From there, what you will find, saints of God, is, is that also, not only if you do not use your talents, God will take it from you and he'll give it to somebody who'll do something with it. And I know even from this text, it, it, it reads very much so like the saying that we say the rich get richer and the poor get poor. But you've got to understand that's a godly concept. And it's not because the rich are wicked. It's because the rich, the rich are faithful with the talents that they're given. And the poor won't even do with what they have. There's too many people, too many poor people that have become wealthy because they use those two pennies to increase their kingdom. They've turned down to 10,000 to get the millions. And we're talking about Christian principles. And, and ultimately, when we're talking about God moving in the believer, we're talking about not only an increase in faith, but we're talking about increase in relationship with God. That means the more he blesses and the more you see him work, the more you have a testimony to share. And you get richer in faith. You get richer in hope. And guess what? If it's finances that God has gifted you in, then you get richer in finances. You get Richer in relationships, richer in friendships. Understand, saints of God, in verse 30 where it says, and throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is, this is apocalyptic language. This is the language we read in Revelation. This is judgment language. And yes, depending on how you treat what God has given you, how good a steward you are. There are eternal penalties. There are eternal judgments. 
based on what you do with what God has given you. You may say, Pastor, you've been getting on this fire and brimstone message for the past five to six weeks. Well, I've got to go here. I've got to warn you because some of us think it's okay to waste time, but it's not. God holds us accountable for it. But here's the good news. Not only will we find ourselves in the worst of the worst if we aren't faithful with what God has given us, we'll also find ourselves in the best condition that we'd ever be in if we would but just be faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Ask the Lord, what would you have me to do with my time, my talent, my treasure? What you'll find is through your faithfulness, you will receive an inheritance that is imperishable. You will receive an inheritance that is unspoiled. You will receive an inheritance that does not fade. An inheritance that's reserved for you. We can look at all of the things that we've done wrong in life. And we could say, well, you know what? I've wasted so much time. I've wasted so much money. I never used my talent. But as long as you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity to be restored back to the kingdom. Did you not forget that we are heirs to the master builder? That everything that you've ever done wrong, God has forgiven you. If you would but just come to Christ and ask the Lord to redeem you. Saints, there are those right now that are hearing this message that are saying, you know, I never considered that God would forgive me of the most atrocious thing that I've, I've done. You go ahead and fill in the blank. You, you know what you've done. But I'm here to tell you in response to that, though you never imagined, God is one who goes beyond the furthest, the furthest imagination of any man, anything that you can fathom. He can deliver you from the lowest point you've ever been in life to carry you on to his eternal kingdom. And all you've got to do is ask him. It's that simple. It doesn't take any special language. All it takes is to ask the Lord through Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you for your sins, and you are forgiven. Is anyone ready to walk in this forgiveness? Eternal and Most High God, again, we thank you for this word, this word on stewardship, dear Lord. We thank you for allowing us to recognize that, that, that we ought to consider you more in everything that we do, everything that we say, everywhere that we go. We need to consider you, Lord, in even our, our, our idle thoughts. We need to consider you, Lord, in our idle time so that our idle time actually have value toward drawing closer to you, toward furthering your kingdom, toward exalting you. Right now, dear Lord, as the listeners hear this word, my prayer is that you give them the strength and that you give them the course so that they know that though this time on this earth may be short, every breath that you give them is an opportunity to correct, to live correctly, to live circumspectly, and to exalt you. Have your way with the hearer. Have your way with this word. These and all prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.